Hello, uh, my name is Carlo Ratti, I'm professor at MIT where I uh, direct Sensible City Lab. Uh, it's a research center where we are passionate about cities and exploring how new technologies are changing the way we can understand, design and ultimately live in cities. Initially, I was trained as an engineer, as a structural engineer, and then I did architecture and computer science at Cambridge in the, in the UK. Um, and I was finishing my PhD when I met uh, the then Dean of the School of Architecture and Planning at MIT. He invited me to come here for nine months with a Fulbright and, well, that was almost 20 years ago and I'm still here. The city is a universe. Think about the city at all the dimensions. You know, you can look at the city through the lens of uh, economics or sociology or the physical city, architecture and design. So because of this, if you have a lab on cities, it's very important to, to take, to, to have a, an omnidisciplinary approach. And that's what we try to do at Sensible City. You know, we've got people coming from design, planning, architecture, we've got people coming from, from engineering, from computer science, but also from physics or mathematics. And finally, we've got people coming from the social sciences, from uh, economics or from sociology. And really, you need all of those skills in order to make sense of something as complex as a city. When you put so many disciplines around the same table, um, then you know there's, uh, there's issues at the beginning. We even need to find a common language. Sometimes you use the same words for meaning different things. And, uh, and so the beginning is tough, but then little by little the magic happens. And the magic is really starting to explore knowledge as a unity and not knowledge as disciplinary silos. Almost a decade ago, we were working in, uh, in New York City. And I remember going to see Mike Bloomberg's office in New York at the time, Mike Bloomberg was the mayor of the city, uh, and he had a little sign on the wall. And the sign went, uh, in God we trust, everybody else bring data. And so what he did as a mayor was actually open up many data sets about uh, New York and about uh, you know, many real-time data from the city. Now we started analyzing data from the Tax and Limousine Commission, and that's data, anonymized data, that tells you everything about all the taxi trips in the city. And the first question we ask uh, is a question that I ask myself many times at a hotel in New York. I'm at a hotel in New York, I got a trolley, I'm going to the airport, uh, and next to me there's somebody else with another trolley going somewhere. It turns out we might be going to the same place, we could have shared a ride, but we didn't know it. And so initially we looked at mathematics in order to quantify what we call the shareability of taxi trips in New York. Clearly, when you look at shareability, you need to look at, uh, you know, the time. Clearly, if you take a very long time, if you accept that people might get to destination an hour late, you can share a lot of trips. The goal here is how can you make that uh, time delay very small. It's a small delta, one, two or three minutes. And what we discovered at the time is actually in New York, you could take everybody to destination when they need to be there, give or take one, two or three minutes, but with 40% less taxes than what we have today. When the project was made public, and later, when the paper was published, well, they both started a very nice debate online. Uh, many articles, uh, people saying, you know, this could be cool to share more trips, more rides. Uh, I even remember a review in the New York Times where the editor said, well, well, this is interesting mathematics, but you know, New Yorkers don't want to share anything. It turns out that that is not the case. And actually, as a result of this project, we called it HubCub, as a result of it, uh, we started the first collaboration between MIT and Uber. Uh, and as you might know today, Uber Pool does exactly that. It allows people going more or less in the same direction to share a ride. And not only Uber Pool, but actually every other company in this space, think about Didi in China or Lyft in the United States, uh, Ola, Via, you name it, you know, I've been developing similar services. For me, the interesting thing is that uh, when you've got two cars, and you combine them, two trips and you combine them, instead of two cars on the road, you've got one car, which means uh, less congestion, less energy consumption, and less pollution in our cities. That's a very simple example of how we can use data in order to represent the city. And then, you know, by analyzing data, we can think about how the city could uh, be run in a different way.